Now we're going to start part 2 of this topic. Here we will cover what is system analyst role and what is system development lifecycle. Why there is a need for system analysis and design? Installing a system without proper planning leads to great user dissatisfaction and frequent causes to the system fall into disuse. It lends structure to the analysis and design of information systems. And it is a series of processes systematically undertaken to improve a business through the use of computerized information systems. As a system analyst, you must have these three key criteria. The first one is environment. System analyst studies the problem and needs of an organization to determine how people, data, process, communications, and information technology can best accomplish improvement for the business organizations. Second, roles. The analyst must be able to work with people of all descriptions and be experienced in working with computers. The three primary roles are consultant, supporting expert, and agent of change. Third, qualities. Analysts must have this type of qualities such as problem solver, communicator, strong personal and professional ethics, self-discipline, and self-motivated. This figure shows the system analyst as a facilitator. System analysts must be ready to facilitate the communications between various committees, IT vendors, programmers, network administrators, interface design experts, consultants, administrator of the database, the system owner itself, and of course, the end user. The next slide, we will learn about the system development life cycle or SDLC. What is system development life cycle? It is a phased approach to solving business problems. It is developed through the use of a specific cycle of analysts and user activities. Each phase has unique user activities. It incorporating human computer interaction into considerations. Nowadays, the demand for analysts who are capable of incorporating HCI into the system's development process keep increasing as companies begin to realize that the quality of systems and the quality of work life can be improved by taking a human-centered approach at the outset of a project. There are seven phases in system development life cycle. First phase is identifying problems, opportunities, and objectives. Second phase, determining human information requirements. Third phase, analyzing system needs. Fourth phase, designing the recommended system. Fifth phase, developing and documenting software. Phase six, comprise of testing and maintaining the system. And phase seven, comprise of implementing and evaluating the system. Phase one. Identifying problems, opportunities, and objectives. There are four main activities. 1. Interviewing user management. 2. Summarizing the knowledge obtained. 3. Estimating the scope of the project. 4. Documenting the results. The output of phase 1 will be the feasibility reports. It contains problem definition and objective summaries from which management can make a decision on whether to proceed with the proposed project and come up with your system proposal. Phase 2. Determining human information requirements. There are six main activities. 1. Interviewing. 2. Sampling and investing hard data. 3. Questionnaires. 4. Observe the decision maker's behavior and environment. 5. Prototyping. And six, learn the who, what, where, when, how, 
and Y of the current system. For the outputs, the analysts need to understand how users accomplish their work when interacting with the computer and begin to know how to make the new system more useful and usable. They also should know the business functions and have complete information on the people, goals, data, and procedure involved. Phase 3. Analyzing system needs. There are four main activities. 1. Create data flow diagrams. 2. Complete the data dictionary. 3. Analyze the structured decisions made. and 4. Prepare and present the system proposal. The main output of phase 3 should be the recommendation on what, if anything, that should be done. Phase 4. Designing the recommended system. There are five main activities. 1. Design the procedures for data entry. 2. Design the human-computer interface. 3. Design system controls. 4. Design files and database. 5. Design the backup procedures. The main output for phase 4 is the model of the actual system. Phase 5. Developing and documenting software. There are four main activities. 1. System analyst works with programmers to develop any original software. 2. They work with users to develop effective documentations. 3. Programmers design, code, and remove synthetical error from computer programs. 4. Document software with help files, procedure manuals, and websites with frequently asked questions. The main output for phase 5 is computer programs and the system documentation. Phase 6. Testing and maintaining the system. There are three main activities. 1. Test the information system. 2. The system maintenance and 3. The maintenance documentations. The main output for phase 6 includes problems, if there is any, updated programs and documentation. Phase 7. Implementing and evaluating the system. There are three main activities. 1. Do user training. 2. Analyze the plan to make sure smooth conversion from the old system to the new one. 3. Review and evaluate the system. The main output for phase 7 should be train personnel and the installed system itself. This figure shows the importance of system maintenance. As you can see, it shows that some researchers estimate that the amount of time spent on system maintenance may be as much as 60% of the total time spent on system projects. Maintenance can have a huge impact toward the system. Maintenance is performed for two reasons. One, removing software errors, and two, enhancing existing software. Over the time, the cost of continued maintenance will be greater than that of creating an entirely new system. At that point, it becomes more feasible to perform a new system study. This figure shows the resource consumption over the system life. The y-axis represents the amount of resources consumed, time and money. The x-axis represents time. As you can see, after the installation day, the amount of resource consumed decreasing. But Due to major changes in both businesses and technology that happen over time, it will slowly increase.